Hello and welcome to Road to the White House, a WEBN Political Pulse special. I'm Peyton Kavanaugh. And I'm JL Beto. Tonight we're breaking down the 2024 presidential election, starting with the Iowa caucuses. This year during the caucus, there was a blizzard and record cold temps. Reporter Ryan Nelson has more. For the first time in history, Iowans caucused in negative degree weather. This officially made the 2024 caucus the coldest ever recorded. The National Weather Service released a six-day wind chill warning going through to caucus night, warning that wind chill temperatures could hit negative 45 degrees. It was also the second snowiest five-day stretch in Des Moines history. The weather wreaked havoc on campaigns, forcing many candidates to cancel events. Many were speculating on how each campaign was going to get its support out and to the caucus. A campaign that has precinct volunteers is looking through that list and they're going to say, hey, this person might need someone to go pick them up. They live way out on gravel. We need someone with a four-wheel drive pickup to go get that person. The poor weather also hurt many of the hospitality businesses in Des Moines. Paul Rottenberg is the president of Orchestrate Hospitality, which owns more than 11 businesses in and around Des Moines. The typical year, we see a pretty caucus. We see a pretty solid 15, 20% increase in the 30 days leading up to caucus, and we have not seen that this year. While weather wasn't the only factor, the snow and Arctic temperatures had a huge impact on turnout. Only 14% of the state's registered Republicans caucused. Reporting for WEBN, I'm Ryan Nelson. Voters were eager to hear from candidates despite the snow. I spoke to supporters of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis at an early morning event. Let's take a look. Pretty good energy for a frosty, you know, snowy, wintry day in Iowa. Governor Ron DeSantis was introduced by Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds this snowy Friday morning to speak to Iowans at the Whiskey River restaurant. Voters turned out bright and early to hear the governor's remarks. Again, I'll ask you for your support on Monday. I know it's going to be cold. Uh, I know it's going to be um, um, not the most pleasant, but... I don't think you'll ever be able to cast a vote that has more impact. Well, it's just days before the caucuses here in Iowa, and as you can see behind me, it is an absolute winter wonderland blizzard. But for some voters, this isn't their first caucus in the cold, and it won't be their last. As a site director and a, and a precinct chairman, and, you know, I, I bring my broom, I bring my snow shovel, we get it ready for everybody to show up. Uh, we don't let anybody stand outside. We get them right inside the facility, so it's nice and warm. Randy Wyside of Ankeny, Iowa, has been to a number of events with other Republican candidates. As a precinct chairman and a longtime resident of Iowa, he is confident that the turnout on Monday will be better than expected. Iowans, we're used to the weather, and we take our role, our responsibility as citizens, uh, I think much more seriously than uh, people in other states. From snowy Des Moines for WEBN, I'm Peyton Kavanaugh. Front runner and former President Donald Trump had campaign surrogates host some of his events. Reporter Molly Doherty has the story. A restaurant in Anthony, Iowa was painted red, white, and blue on caucus day. Donald Trump Jr. and Kimberly Guilfoyle made it through the historic snow to hold a campaign event for Donald Trump. All right. I apologize. I know this was supposed to be like three hours ago, but... Uh, Let's just say this weather has made travel a little bit difficult, okay? Trump Jr. wants to unseat current President Joe Biden from the Oval Office. He believes Iowans can help in this effort. Let's end this primary now. You can have the opportunity to do that tonight. We can then focus on actually what matters, which is stopping the insane policies of Joe Biden and the radical Democrat agenda. Gil Foyle, a surrogate for the Trump campaign, most definitely agrees. I expect that President Trump will do very well today. He's been very committed to Iowans, and I think that this is a state that appreciates um, his unbelievable record accomplishments. David and Patricia Loggi are both caucus captains for the former president. They say religion led them to support Trump. Well, we're both ministers, and we know God picked him. Trump Jr. and Gil Foyle both believe Trump can secure the nomination. However, it all comes down to what voters want on caucus night. For WEBN News, I'm Molly Doherty. Carrie Lake also joined Trump on the campaign trail in Iowa as a surrogate. Iowans love President Trump. President Trump um, understands uh, hard work. He understands a good work ethic and, and he understands um, real 
patriotic Americans, and that's what you get here in Iowa. You get a work ethic unlike anywhere else. Frankly, I think we need more Iowa in every other state. Former UN ambassador and governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, looked to small business owners for support. Let's go back to reporter Molly Doherty for more. Can you Great day in Iowa. Can you Candidate Nikki Haley recently spoke at a local event space in Ankeny, Iowa. She eased concerns about the country's economic state and shared her plans to fix them. To make the small business tax cuts permanent, they made them temporary. Small businesses are the heartbeat of our economy. We need to start proving it by making those small business tax cuts permanent. John Erickson, an Iowa small business owner, supports Haley because he believes she will represent his interests in the White House. I think she's a strong leader, intelligent woman, and pragmatic, and I think she can bring this country together. I really do. From Iowa, I'm Molly Doherty, WEBN. Coming up, how Iowa youth got involved in the caucus. And discover exactly what the process is like on caucus night. Stay tuned. Flip it, cuff it, check it. High blood pressure silently affects millions of Americans. Staying on top of your blood pressure is as simple as these four easy steps. Self-monitoring is power. Visit manageyourbp.org to learn more. Yo, camping buddy. Okay, you guys ready? Dude, I thought you were driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. I, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> if you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. Welcome back to Road to the White House. We head to reporter Molly Doherty in the WEBN Election Center for an update on remaining Republican candidates. Thanks, Peyton. The Republican primary contest had many candidates early on. Many have since dropped out or suspended their campaigns. The first major candidate to drop was former Vice President Mike Pence. He dropped his bid on October 28th. Pence was polling at just 3% in Emerson College Polling's October survey of the GOP candidates. In the end, his campaign struggled to raise enough funds. We spoke to the former VP in Nashua, New Hampshire at the First in the Nation Leadership Summit. I want people to know that uh, I think Joe Biden is weak in this country at home and abroad, and now's the time for experienced, tested, conservative leadership that can secure our border, revive our economy, and restore American strength on the world stage. And from all of my years of experience as a governor, as a congressman, and as vice president, I know I'm that man. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott suspended his presidential campaign on November 13th. Right before he dropped, a poll conducted by the Morning Consult had Scott at just 2%. The senator also spoke to a crowd at the same First in the Nation Leadership Summit event in New Hampshire. So many people in our country. On the left, they're, it's like a cancer growing. On the right, there's a little bit of it too. There's this drug called victimhood that is devastating our country. And it comes with the narcotic of despair. There's these people who actually believe that grievance is our way forward, and I know that greatness is our only path to remain the city on the hill. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie dropped out of the race on January 10th of this year. He suspended his race just a few days shy of the Iowa caucuses. Throughout his campaign, Christie was a strong critic of former President Trump. He cited not seeing a clear path to the nomination for his reason for suspension. He spoke at a town hall, also in Nashua, New Hampshire, in November. I love this country, but you can't truly love this country unless you open your heart to its people. And that goes for all of us. We have to open our heart to each other. Pence and Christie have not endorsed any other candidates yet. Senator Scott has endorsed former President Trump. That's all the updates I have for you right now. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Molly. 
Vivek Ramaswamy directly addressed his plans for the younger generation at a house party. Reporter Lizzie Pereira has more. Presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy spoke to a crowd of Iowans at a house party days before the caucuses. Younger voters made up a large part of the audience. Nobody's actually representing your generation and the issues that concern you, which I think above all are the national debt. Ramaswamy's message resonated with many young voters. For one first-time voter, Ramaswamy's statements on political unity were especially important. I vote independent, and I felt as though he was very, very connected to the ideology that we need to focus as the country as a whole instead of just working on Democrats and Republicans. So if we have a Republican president, we don't only need Republican policies. We need to help the country as a whole. Ramaswamy portrayed himself as a young candidate who can lead a fresh Republican Party. Right, but what you want in a leader, what I would want in a leader, I think what we want in a leader, is somebody who leads not just when it's easy, but when it's hard. As Gen Z voters come of age, they are paying attention to candidates such as Vivek Ramaswamy, who promise a new generation of leadership. From Polk County, Iowa, I'm Liz Pereira, WEBN. Other GOP candidates looked to youth voters in hopes of garnering last-minute support. Uh, every college student, uh, every young person wants to have an opportunity for a job and to move up the economic ladder. And that's what I want to promote. I want the private sector economy to grow faster than the government sector. Hutchinson spoke to a large student audience the night before the caucus. He emphasized his character and long history of political experience. Candidate Ryan Binkley runs on a platform that appeals to the youth vote by connecting to people on a human level. I see the hurts, I see the pains, I recognize even young people that are struggling today. I've got five kids, 13 to 23, so I, I see through that lens also. And I think that will help because, you know what, you can have some great solutions, but if you don't connect to people along the way, we're not going to really unite our country, and that's my plan. Witnessing the struggles of the younger generation, Binkley hopes to bring his background as a pastor and a CEO to address their economic concerns. On caucus night, Iowans gathered in frigid temperatures to cast the first votes of the 2024 election season. We go to reporter Callie Croson for a closer look at the process. Iowa voters gathered in 1,657 precincts across the state for the Iowa caucuses, a tradition around since 1972. At precinct 316, in West Des Moines, Iowa, Republicans selected their choice for the party nominee. They call him Death Santos. Our federal government smaller, and let's move those. I've uh, been in the U.S. since 2015. High walls. I would ask you. And then make their selection on a piece of paper. The ballot is about to be official. Votes are cast, collected, and counted directly in the precinct, and those there can observe. Some Iowans will choose to stay to listen to the results, while others will head home. Trump, 5-1, 51. DeSantis, 6-4, 64 votes. Haley, 109, 109 votes. 240 votes total. From Precinct 316, Callie Crozen, WEBN. When we come back, get a breakdown of caucus results. And take an inside look at caucus night watch parties. Stay tuned. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. Uh, you're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just. Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. 
Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back to Road to the White House. We go back to the WBN Election Center where reporter Molly Doherty has caucus night results. Thanks, JL. Let's break down caucus night results. The winner of the Iowa caucuses was former President Donald Trump. He received 51% of the vote. That equals 56,243 votes. The Associated Press called the race early in the evening before many precincts caucused. Now, it was a tight race for Trump's competitors for second place. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis clinched the position with 21.3% of the vote. That equals 23,491 votes. And in third, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley received 19.1% of the vote. That equals 21,027 votes. For this year's caucuses, 110,272 votes were reported. That's all for Iowa caucus results. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Molly. We now go to reporter Lizzie Pereira at Governor Ron DeSantis' caucus night watch party. Ron DeSantis addressed a crowd of supporters and volunteers at his campaign watch party on caucus night. He placed second at the caucuses. DeSantis was excited about the results, considering it momentum going into the rest of the nominating season. People want to have hope for this country's future, and that's what we represent. We represent a chance to reverse the madness that we've seen in this country. The Associated Press called the race in favor of Donald Trump roughly 30 minutes after the caucuses began. This upset some DeSantis voters who thought it unfair. I was really upset when people hadn't even voted in the caucus. We had just, people had just finished giving speeches for their candidates and the race had already been called for Trump. Still, DeSantis supporters are holding out hope that their ideal candidate will earn the nomination. Many DeSantis backers we spoke to are committed to supporting the Republican nominee, regardless of who it may be. In Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Liz Pereira reporting with WBN News. On caucus night, I was at the Trump watch party at the Iowa Event Center. Here's that story. Well, I want to thank everybody. This has been some period of time, and most importantly, we want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. As the final polls were released in anticipation of the 2024 Iowa caucuses, former President Donald Trump was already in the lead by a wide margin. Spearheading his campaign were campaign surrogates taking to rallies and speaking on his behalf for weeks on the ground in Iowa. Surrogates, candidate for Arizona Senate and former resident of Iowa, Carrie Lake. I couldn't be more proud of my fellow Iowans. And I think the message going forward is the American people want to have good, strong America, and we're, we want to we wanna make America great again, and there's not a darn thing wrong with that. Although Trump was not on the ground campaigning, like his opponents, supporters still avidly backed his campaign. 17-year-olds Ethan and Aiden caucused and supported the Trump campaign, even though they can't cast a vote. I think it's important because you got to think ahead, like, our generation is going to be having to deal with the consequences if... Democrats keep staying in office and just destroying our country. As the night continued and votes were counted, the former president took a landslide win of over 50 percent. Continuing on the trail, Trump campaign surrogates are certain they will continue to win the votes of the American people. After the break, get an update on the future of the Iowa caucus. And a Des Moines restaurant adds their own flavor to the race. Stay tuned. <laughs> to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Welcome back to Road to the White House. 
the order of primaries and caucuses changed this election cycle. Ryan Nelson spoke to Iowans about the state's coveted first-in-the-nation status. Iowans have lost their complete first-in-the-nation status as Democrats elected to start with South Carolina instead of Iowa. Many lifelong residents, including Akshita Kalman Reddy, think it's essential that Iowa goes first. So I've lived in Iowa my whole life, and I feel as though we are very, very humble, and we have this sense of, you know, respect for each other, and it's a smaller state. It really gives an expectation of what the average person is thinking outside of, you know, big cities. Beyond pride, there are economic reasons the state is fighting to remain first. Des Moines Tourism Office estimates that there was a $4.2 million direct impact on the city just in the week leading up to the caucus. In 2020, that number was more than doubled at $11.3 million. The impact is beyond just one week, as Catch Des Moines Creative and Communications Director Ben Hanfelt explains. Because we've been first in the nation, it's all of that time leading up to it. You know, the campaigns have been here for six months to a year, um, and they come out for things like the Iowa State Fair, like every single candidate's here for the fair. And um, so it's really kind of that lead up time and really that whole year before, uh, which is the big, you know, economic driver uh, for the region. While it is uncertain if Iowa will remain the leading state for Republicans in 2028, there is no doubt Iowans are proud to caucus. Even if we're not first in the nation, um, it is something that I think we will still take very seriously. Reporting for WEBN, I'm Ryan Nelson. Local businesses took advantage of the busy week leading up to the caucus. One restaurant in Des Moines got in the spirit. Reporter Callie Crozen has the story. In downtown Des Moines East Village, a local business is taking a tasty spin on the Iowa caucuses with specials like the Meatball Ron, one of this year's creations at Zombie Burger and Drink Lab. Yeah, so every caucus season, um, it's just kind of something playful that we do. Employee Lizette Webb Strike had to try the special. Drop my Meatball Ron, have it in here. Uh, I'm pretty pro marinara and uh, Banana peppers, I believe that's what we got fried on here. Uh, I'm excited. I love marinara. Shakes, such as the Sleepy Joe, are just another play on the 2024 candidate field. The meatballs. <laughs> the meatballs on a burger, I was like, I've never seen that before. Um, and then also the milkshake ingredients, like the, the special mint flavor that they were going to use in there and stuff, the make it Sleepy Joe, that was going to be that was gonna be very interesting. From Zombie Burger, I'm Callie Crozen with WEBN and Meatball Raw. How about that hidden garlic bread lift? And you can wash it all down with a milkshake. Sounds good to me. Well, that's all we have for now. Thank you for watching Road to the White House. I'm Peyton Kavanaugh. And I'm JL Beto. Stay tuned for more election coverage.